We're ready to go. When you make the order. Business. All right, so we have the submitted application uh, from the applicant, uh, Swift River Properties, the subdivision of Red Barn and War Hill Road. Uh, hard copies were received in the office uh, within the 14 day, uh, outside of that 14 day window. So it was in compliance with the ordinance. Uh, hard copies were received as well as electronic copy. Uh, those were distributed to the board, members of the board in all forms. They're available here at the office uh, if requested. Uh, so that is in the application fee received. So now is the time we've got the uh, application completion checklist. Uh, so this is now your formal application. Uh, so that's your town of Norwich subdivision ordinance application completion checklist. We're going to want to go through that uh, to make sure that all of that information is contained in the application that was submitted. And then also the performance standards checklist. Um, we'll go through that as well, uh, which then. Um, so are we looking to complete this tonight? We are looking that to, well, no, it's not going to happen like that. But the goal <laughs> is to <laughs> go through the preliminary plan review, make sure that everything is in compliance. If it's not in compliance, we're going to ask the applicant to either provide an explanation, maybe add a condition uh, or covenant or whatnot, or make an adjustment to the plan so that it can then come back to the next step as prescribed by the ordinance to the final plan review. And the final plan review then requires your mylar and your paper copies, et cetera. So okay. tonight's really and the, the notice has been sent out to the abutters. Yes, I sent that myself. Okay. Um, I think I see where there was some return things about from the abutters. There was questioning the well and wasn't there. I have not received any communication from the abutters. The communication that oh, so wait just a minute. So as a part of the preliminary plan review. We're going to go through all of this to make sure that what's prescribed in the ordinance is being needed in the application is actually here. Should be pretty standard. Um, and then we get over into a subsection of that performance standards checklist. That's going to be the more technical aspect of this where we're going to have discussion. The board's going to have discussion with the applicant in terms of um, the design and, and things like that, suitability of subsurface wastewater. Uh, a lot of that should already be spelled out in the application, but if it's not, then we have the opportunity to ask questions, ask for clarification, more specific information, et cetera, et cetera. So, having said that, the only notice that goes to a butters is a notice of this meeting mm -hmm. that gives them the opportunity to submit written comment, to uh, participate electronically, uh, or to attend here in person. For this step in the process, I've received no communication from a others. Mm -hmm. And we do have two direct others tonight that are present. Um, did they ask for a waiver of any kind? Don't believe that there was a waiver that was requested. There were no waiver forms that were submitted. Rather. Right. That's correct. Thank you. So because we have people that are participating remotely, I think it's best that if we do it out loud. Margaret, do you have the form? I do. And Mike's in the car. So the first thing on the preliminary <clears throat> plan review is submitted at least 14 days before the regular meeting. Without objection, we'll record that as yes. Yes. The application fee has been paid. I have received that in the office. Without objection, we'll mark that as yes. All right. Notice sent by first class to a butters by the town. I have sent that. Without objection, we'll record that as yes. Yes. Waiver form, or waiver request form, if applicable. 
I have found there to be none that are applicable as far as the application is, and A, without objection. Okay. Uh, location map to scale showing subdivision and adjacent properties. That provided on the board up there was also folded up in your mail. Oh, okay. Without objection, we'll record that as yes. Yes. Boundaries of designation of all shoreland zoning and other land use districts. Without objection, there are none. That's an MA. No. Okay. The outline of proposed subdivision and any remaining portion of the owner's property, if not included in the subdivision proposal, that is on the large site plan that was mailed to you. Without objection, that would be a yes. Okay. Now, general information provided in the application. Yeah. Wait a minute. Can we take each section and have a vote on that? Would that? Well, we need to go through line by line, and because we're broadcasting remotely, it has to be outlined, just like a roll call. Okay, but we—that was part of this section, and you said, you know, without objection, the answer is yes. But I would like to have a motion and a vote of the board so to it, accept this entire section is correct. So at the next meeting, we're going to have findings of fact mm -hmm. that go through each of these. It says, yeah, and you're going to have the whole vote on every one of these items, okay. just like we did for the waste management application. Okay, gotcha. And yes, it, yes, it's applicable, and I'm going to go through this application and mine that information real quick. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, general information provided, including the name and address. If anybody has objection, just <clears throat> interrupt, please. Uh, name and address of the applicant and the applicant's agent is included. The right of uh, proof of right title or interest to the property is included. It is. Uh, all existing and proposed deed restrictions, right of ways, and other incumbences affecting the property. Has anything changed since the application has been submitted? Um, no. Um, encumbrances have been changed. I do want to uh, mention one change to the plan, um, which will be updated come next meeting. This large parcel, the owner of Bucktail LLC. Does that have a parcel number or not? It doesn't. This is not a lot. So it's a large portion reserved in the rear of the property? Yep. So this lot was conveyed as of today to new owners, um, the Turners. The Turners also, as an abutter transfer, purchased the land of what is lot one shown on this plan. So this, the remaining lots will be updated. The total acreage of the subdivision will be updated and record owner will be updated for the following meeting. Okay. But as presented, the answer to that is yes. Does the application contain the book page and the map and lot of the property? Yes, uh, the property owners and budding property owners. Yes, as current acreage of the proposed subdivision, acreage of road, acreage of any land not included in the subdivision. Yes, subdivision plan at a scale of not more than 100 feet to the inch, including the name of the subdivision, which is Red Barn Road subdivision. Very unique. Yes. The number of lots. <laughs> <laughs> yes, are contained. Uh, the North Point in graphic scale. So this is all coming from your large, what's up there, <clears throat> is included, the proposal outlines with dimensions. Survey of the perimeter of the track, giving complete descriptive data by bearing and distances made and certified by registered land surveyor. Corner of the track shall be located on the ground and marked by permanent markers. The plan includes the type of permanent marker proposed to be set or found at each lot corner. Is that contained on the plan? It is, yes. Contour intervals specified. Thank you. Location of all wetlands, regardless of size, include forested and non-forested. That's, that's on the plan. Location of all river streams, brooks, ponds within or adjacent to the subdivision. Uh, there aren't any within the subdivision, but adjacent, you can see turn number up. Thank you. Location of all slopes in excess of 20%. Is number of acres within the subdivision, location of property lines, existing buildings, vegetative cover type, and other essential existing features. Included. Location of any significant grand sand and gravel aquifers? Not applicable. 
boundary of any flood hazard areas and the 100 year flood elevation is depicted on the town's most recent firm map. All temporary and permanent erosion features. Um, there's a soil erosion note on the back. Uh, do you have a written statement from the plumbing inspector regarding test pit boring data in conformance with state law on this ordinance? I do. That's uh, exhibit seven of the packet that was handed up. Thank you. Uh, the boundaries of the shoreline and zoning districts, not relevant. Location boundaries of any significant wildlife habitat is, de is defined by Department of Indian Fisheries and Wildlife. Uh, location in our structure. Uh, list on National Historic, uh, Register of Historic Places or any ar archaeological site identified by the State Historic Preservation Commission? No. And no. You do have a pending letter to them, correct? We do, waiting on response. They say they'll respond within 30 days. Yeah, okay. That. Uh, location of all rare and endangered plants is identified by Department of Conservation. And none on the, there's none on the property. Location of all wildlife after that? Uh, none. Location of all scenic areas and rare natural areas. No. Location of all subsurface wastewater disposal system test pits or borings and test data and appropriate documentation. That is on the plan and included in the submission back. Thank you. Location of all existing and proposed wells and appropriate documentation. That is included in the packet. Uh, all erosion control features proposed for the site. Yep, that's on the plan. All stormwater control features proposed for the site. No. None. On the, on the plan? Well, no. No, it's just sort okay. of erosion. Uh, all parcels of land proposed to be owned or held in common or joint ownership by subdivision or individual lot owners. All land proposed to be offered for public acceptance to the town. None proposed. Documentation showing that adequate public water and or sewer is available to serve subdivision if municipal services are to be used. Is a well driller statement included in the submission? Road plan specifications, appropriate documentation is required by the Norwich Rock Road Ordinance. Type and location of any proposed fire control features and appropriate documentation. We have a fire letter from yeah. David. Yeah. Uh, statement indicating how solid waste from the subdivision will be handled. Uh, there's a note on the plan saying solid waste will be disposed at the expense of the individual private facility. Okay. Uh, documentation indicating that the applicant has the financial and technical capacity to meet the requirement of the ordinance. It's not applicable, but I do have a statement for my Thank you. Uh, Indication of how all roads and other public improvements will be maintained until the improvements are dedicated to the town or for private roads and improvements, how they will be maintained, how they will maintain them over their lifespan. No roads. Okay. That is the content of your application. Now we're on to the performance standards. Are there any questions from the board relevant to the completeness of the application? So the first item. Do you have any questions, Margaret? No. Okay. A minimum no. of 20,000 square feet in, a, in Norwich Water District area, not relevant, or 30,000 square feet outside of the district with 100 feet of frontage. So each of your lots have a minimum of 30,000 square feet and 150 feet of frontage. Correct. Uh, have you installed permanent monumentation? Yes. And no farther than 750 feet apart? Um, no. So they have to be, but no farther than 750 feet apart along road lines? No. You can see where each pit is in relation to it. Oh, so it, they are not less than, they're not more than 750 feet apart. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And you're at all corners and angle points of the subdivision boundaries or interior angles and subdivisions is 135 degrees or less? Yes. Permanent monumentation at all other subdivision boundary corners and angle points plus lot boundary corners and angle points. What's the 
Yeah. You have permanent monumentation at all other subdivision boundary corners and angle points. Yes. Okay. That's the rebar thing. All right. Yeah. Two pins. Yeah. 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 Two pins. Uh, do you have lot lines that are not 90 degrees of the road? Um, they're very close if they are. Um, if they're not, no. the monument shall be set back 100 feet from the road at each side. I can look to see. I mean, do the lot lines look to be at a Something greater than less than 90 degree angle to the board. It'd be perpendicular to the road, correct? It won't look square to me. All right, so that's what we're asking, right? 90 degree angle. It's going to be 90 degrees or less. No, so the lot lines are not 90 degrees to the road. The monument shall be set 100 feet from the road at each side. That one from lot five. I don't know. There's some curvy road I could tell you, but that's tough to tell. I think road project. Here's would be 90. <laughs> yeah. yeah, to me too. So the board's going to classify that as yes? Yeah. We'll formalize all of this at the next meeting of the finance of fact. Okay. Individual wall sited and constructed to prevent infiltration of, sub of surface water. Are you actually citing these wells? We're not. Included in the uh, well driller statement is their. Um, opinion on location of wells and that they didn't see anything that would prohibit a well being drilled anywhere other than it not it has to be at least 100 feet from the septic system and that note is on the plane. All right so those uh, the what does the well driller also include water supply for the subdivision to each lot is adequate to supply all the potable water and other water requirements of the development? Yes, that is included inadequate. Yeah. All right, so that answers the next question to adequate water is available to supply the subdivision, uh, not from the water district relevant. Subdivision is designed so that fire and all other emergency vehicles have unrestricted access to all developed areas within the subdivision. Letter to Nate Jones. <clears throat> uh, outline of proposed subdivision and any remaining portion of the owner's property is not included in the subdivision proposal. Yeah. Evidence of site suitability and wastewater disposal system prepared by a licensed site evaluator in compliance with state rules. Yes. <clears throat> Test for the boring location shown on subdivision plan and accompanied by an HHE 200 or other format showing the appropriate soils data. Yep, that's included. No variance required. No. And there's no holding systems allowed. Um, the results of the test pit analysis. Um, the holding system wouldn't be needed. Okay. You can have that. Well, we wouldn't issue a permit for a holding system anyway, but as long as that was in the condition of one of your lots. Yeah. Uh, you don't require a letter on the sewer. The site's developed to uh, prevent soil erosion from entering water bodies by land storm water drainage features in adjacent land. Excuse me, sorry. Sorry? Yes, that was We are at performance standards checklist. Three from the bottom. Uh, one of those isn't stable, and one of them is too painted. Thank you. We're going through this rather relatively informally, and then we'll formalize at the next meeting. Okay. All temporary and permanent erosion control measures to sign in accordance with main erosion sedimentation control handbook for construction of DMTs. 
I'm at the bottom, start from the bottom of the performance standard checklist. Okay. So you don't have any just because you're subdeveloping the land and you're not proposing buildings, is that correct? There's no proposed construction, so I'm um, still alive. That was a part of the right of way. Are you just planning that in now? Is it going to be construction of a road to get to the back? So the right of way is no longer going to be part of the subdivision. That would be, that's conveyed to the back. Okay. So that, that would be. Off the All right. So you don't have any temporary or permanent erosion features. The none on site um, on the note on the plan does give um, like the right. plan yep. for future owners to build. And there's no construction or development that's going to happen. So that last line on performance standards checklist would be not applicable. Stormwater control plan, limiting peak discharges from the site to pre-development levels, for the two year, 10 year, 25 year frequency, 24 hours duration storm. That's not applicable. There's no proposed construction. And then the development proposed within a sand and gravel aquifer aquifer design and constructed according to a plan which takes into account the impact of development upon the aquifer also not relevant right it's not located over sand and gravel aquifer now the planning board may require a plan developed by a hydrologist that shows that the proposed development will not have an adverse impact upon the aquifer what is the pleasure of the board there's no aquifer there so if there's no aquifer there, does this does it require the need to have that in the first place? Yeah. I'm asking a question here. So. Um, um, I think it goes to vote. Right. It may require there's no aquifer, so what would you draw a plan of? Nothing. If there is an aquifer, then it's not applicable. So the groundwater that's there theoretically would come from an aquifer, right? So with the aquifer, that the groundwater is coming from. You can be on top of an aquifer, yes, and development could have that impact. But there's also a chance that an aquifer in that area that's supplying the groundwater would then be overburdened by proposed development. Multiple developments. Right. And a lot of other subdivision <clears throat> ordinances, when they ask, you know, is a, should a hydrologist you know, do a study or submit something, they say they will do that if the property is located over a sand, sand and gravel aquifer and one of the two, if the net residential dwelling unit is less than 120,000 square feet or 100,000 square feet um, or I forget the other one. But the, you know, there's 26 acres and six lots. So we're talking 400,000 square feet. So we're well over that threshold. This was brought up at our last meeting that there was a concern about wells. Yeah. By a person who lived in that room, correct? That's correct. Okay. And um, the well driller that provided the letter to mm -hmm. the adequacy of water supply mentioned this well mm -hmm. um, and it had a 60 gallon per minute recharge rate. I have some other information on that too, if you'd like to look at it, depth, um, which is high. All right, some of the wells are set up. 400 feet. Right. It's like 150 to 400 feet. I have a question in regards to uh, the well uh, company providing a letter. Is it just the email that we have in our packet? That's correct. Yeah. And, it, and um, yeah, it just the, the email um, 
uh, it, I mean, it looks like it's uh, it's a copy and paste from uh, an, uh, a correspondence with you, and that um, their letterhead was typed in. Is is it not possible for the next stage to get something formalized with a signature from them? Sure. I mean, I can do that. Yeah. And, uh, so, so that's for Exhibit Twelve. Yeah. And, and exhibit 10, and I just need some cl clarification on exhibit 10 too. As, as you're well known in our area, the whole issue around wells is a, is a hot topic. And I like to formalize the um, correspondence for the planning board that you know, having an, a signature and not just the emails that's in the packet. And in Exhibit 10, if I read that correctly, is that stating that we're still waiting, that it's in uh, in review process, and and it's still we're still waiting on something from them from the state? That's correct. Yep. Okay. All right. I reached out to him a week before that follow-up email, um, and that's when I submitted the requirements. Yeah. The Maine State Historic Commission. Yeah. So the website they say that they take up to thirty days to respond. Yeah. So today is thirty days. I haven't received anything yet, but once I do, I'll include that. Uh, I'll bring that to the next meeting. Okay. And we won't move forward to the next meeting until that documents, those documents come in, Richard? Uh, so we will, based on maybe the need for other adjustments on the plan. If he doesn't have what we need for submissions uh, in total, then it's just gonna be another one of these style meetings where it's, it's a workshop really, where we're telling them what we need, he's making those updates. And then it could, you know, it could be not hopefully not going to be, uh, you know, if it's an efficient process, it could be two meetings, this meeting and the next meeting, if yeah. he takes all of our feedback under consideration. Uh, yeah. But other than that, it could be that he makes some changes and we uh, you know we're still not comfortable with this. And then it back to the drawing board for him in terms of uh, making modifications to the proposal. Yeah, yeah, I think um, so we, we are considering this application as a preliminary application. Uh, with the follow-up that we're talking about during this work session. Yeah, so anything that comes up today, he's he's going to work on, you know, like a, your Exhibit 10 um, from Historic. Yep. We're not going to grant a subdivision, but the board yep. isn't going to grant a subdivision until we have that. Yep. You know, it's just a condition that we're not going to ask him to go through yep. uh, if we can't have that. Um, Thank you. And then, you know, Exhibit 12 on letterhead, that's not an unreasonable request. If yep. we can get that, then that's going to hold the process up. And I just have some questions and you can just let me know, Richard, when it's appropriate in regards to our application checklist. Um, I just have some questions that maybe someone, you can educate me or somebody can educate me about it because I question about the plant life and the wildlife and, um, and there's, you know, there's nothing there or nothing. I mean, do we have anything, um, stating that that is then, you know, because in driving that area, you have this wildlife and plant life that's there. I just want to figure out if we have anything verifying that for the files. I mean, that's, that information is shown on exhibit five, the map provided um, by the Maine Department of Fisheries and Wildlife and other agencies. Okay. Beginning with Habitat is okay. I think the department who has online resources for, for all that mapped information. So can exhibit five, um, is that in your office, Richard? Because I, I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but I can't read those words. Um, it's not, we could request it to come bigger to us, but it's, it was also in the electronic file and I'm pretty sure that electronic file was 18 megs. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think we could probably zoom in closer on that. Okay. I'll crop that out. I'll zoom in, crop out, screenshot it for everybody. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. 
So does the state essentially determine like they would have someone that would say there was some kind of rare patch of plants in that area and it would already have been marked on these maps and the plant state is identified at some point. Okay, that's correct. Yeah, it seems to me that uh, when anything like that, <coughs> the state notifies the town. Because mm -hmm. we had one out on uh, Sandy River. It was um, an eagle or something. Right. right. I yeah. think it's gone now. That was many years ago. Mm -hmm. But they sent us a letter, sent the town a letter saying it was there. Yeah, I did some work on a on, uh place put in the road and part of the runoff had some special something going into that pond or whatever that made it unique and so you couldn't get anywhere near that thing and this includes any kind of um artifacts or you know um native any kind of you know that includes that going over that area that's your exhibit okay 10 they're going to that's, a, that's exhibit 10 is that yeah. what you said okay exhibit 10 that pending the pending recommendation from the state we'll, we'll cover that I, oh oh okay typically don't they have that all mapped They're like you can go online and find those i think a lot of the town plans have those maps where those known sites are anyway correct okay. yeah. yeah but they'll form yeah. that for us all right yeah, I know some, uh, I either it came to me, somebody that knew somebody that works for them and they were commissioned to come out to Norgewalk. And I'm like, why are you coming to Norgewalk? And they're like, we got to go look at some land and, and not, and now this makes sense if it was this land that they're looking at, who knows? No, last weekend there were a couple of archeologists up there part around the old school. Yeah. 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 No. I wondered why. Carrie took care of them. <laughs> Were those your only concerns on that so far, Margaret? So far. Okay. Uh, so back to the development of a, uh, a plan by a hydrologist that shows the proposed development will not have an adverse impact upon an aquifer. Does the board have a pleasure? Uh, since there's been questions by Anna Butter, maybe we should. <clears throat> How does anybody else feel about that? I know the, the biggest thing that I, I can only measure off of our own well. And, and since we've been up there, our well has run dry once. And we have, uh, what is it, four houses up and down that road that are around us. So, I, and we're in the middle of a drought now. And, you know, I just, I just worry about that. I worry about the wells and the, and including the population there. So, but I mean, we, you know, we'll get something in writing from a, court, you know, somebody who's commissioned. Um, is there anything else that we can do to validate, you know, Richard, other than what we're waiting on? We have not requested that. Right. So, I, I mean, what, what's come from the well driller so far is a restriction on well locations. I don't think it deals with capacity. I think that if the well driller was willing to address that capacity that that could satisfy that yeah i think i i think i would feel better i the only measurement i have is off our own well and you know and and for and we're just two people on on that many acres of land and you have and you're like you know the occupancy of that small area is going to increase and it's you know i'm just concerned about that so i, I have a question so i'm not sure with past practice here anytime that you talk about that how much of that is the landowner's responsibility is they're going to buy that piece of land this 
there may not be water there for a while. I mean, they need to know that beforehand or any of that sale occur to past practice. We don't ever, the town doesn't involve themselves in transfer of property. Okay. Okay. So they have to put their own well in and own leach fill in, right? Right. That's correct. And so the job of the planning board now is to get proper documentation that the 10 lots would be able, so subdivision would be able to support the recommended well size and leach field size, right? This is six, six or six lots, not, not 10. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah! <laughs> and if I may, um, obviously, the, you know, water supply is, you know, people like to have water and their wells not run dry, understandably. The abutter who brought up their, the condition of the well, they, they have a, an above ground pool. So I don't know, you know, if we're talking tens of thousands of gallons of water at a time, I can see that. But, um, you know, for residential use, I mean. So if you look at the total lots that you have for sale here, so one of the lots is going to disappear as five of them before and back, correct? Right. So you essentially have, that's going to become 197 acre lot, basically. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Right. So one, two, three, four. So six that would possibly be built on as housing lots. But it was originally 10, right? Um, in the preliminary sketch, yes, because the back lot, the big back lot, and then there was a piece that was broken off and sold to a butter over near Turner Brook on the right side. Yeah. That's yeah. the longer part of it. And then you've got one on the far left towards Ward Hill that's not going to be a part of it either. Yeah, yeah. And and who's to say that above pool wasn't uh, filled with a, a tank of water? Right. Um, that they went to North Pond, filled up the tra uh, trailer uh, tanker, and brought the water over. We don't know. That's right. right. This microphone is dry. I always have to pop it off. <laughs> is it, my thought would be: Is there anything that would lead us to that? To the to meaning uh, that that we would require a hydrologist to develop a plan? Meaning, is there anything adverse here? Is there anything that's going to say, "Boy, there may not be water"? I just, <clears throat> I'm not. I don't see anything. We have a well in the area that's already put into the 60 gallons a minute. So, I mean, so I know I know you can go online and you can any any public well pretty much you can go on and click and it'll tell you how deep right. and all that stuff. I just I just don't know if there's anything here that's that's leading us to say, boy, there may not be water there. I don't I just I'm not I'm just not seeing anything that is. Well, all, we, all, all, all I want is something official rather than a Gmail account that's right. not signed off by an official for both we, the, both the state of Maine and by the well person. That's all I want. If we get something official, that is what we should have. Who from the state of Maine would do a thing like that? No, I'm just talking about exhibit where he they just communicated that they're that it's under review and it's coming forward the August 23rd mm -hmm. email. Yeah. 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 So, okay. so I'm gathering the consensus of the board is that you would not require the hydrologist plan if exhibit 12 can be formalized. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if we could put that into a motion, please. Okay. I will make a motion that we will not be require a hydrologist plan as long as we get a real letter with a real signature from Temple Well Service Incorporated. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. You've got a roll call. Oh, that's right. Margaret? Yes. Matt? Yes. Mike? Yes. John? Yes. And me? Yes. Okay. Announce that 
motion has passed. I have a I have a question, Richard. I'm sorry. Um, does the town have the ability after this whole thing goes through? Does the town have the ability to dictate on this um, lot size how how big a well is? We don't even do permits for wells. No. Not how big a well is, we wouldn't, but if they were to come in and uh, propose a site plan development for a structure, then, yeah. you know, it then is on the applicant at that point in time to, you know, they're going to bring something from the fire department that we have the capacity uh, that we've got, uh, you know, adequate water supply as well. So there could come a time when the lots were just devalued because there wasn't an ample water supply to support that. Um, but if he can provide evidence at present that there is ample water supply to support the lots, then it works. So if if I have a if I have a twelve foot well and my neighbor next door has a I I have a hand dug well you know twelve feet down and my neighbor next door has a, a drilled well, does that drill well take away from water wells from like the abutting neighbors? Because it's it's deeper. I mean, I, that may be a st stupid question, but I couldn't begin to tell you. How that <laughs> work. My instinct would be yes. There's all it's all water in the ground. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it depends on the aquifers that you're tapping into and whatnot, and the supply of that aquifer. Now, typically, so, you're talking so, about the lot size and the draw off from that square footage, and what you would talk about density. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It just it just seems like, you know, that if we don't have any regulations, you know, because it's their land and that's fine and it's a subdivision, and, you know, but um, but, you know, someone can come in or, you know, may be able to do a drill well and the abutting neighbors have a dug well, I don't know, but that drill well obviously will maximize on their abutting neighbors. Um, the drill well usually goes down, sets into the bedrock, okay. and you drill down below that. A dug well is on top of the bedrock. Yes. Right. So it's going right. to be a different aquifer. I did quite a bit of site work down in Smithfield, and this drilled well is 50 feet from the lake, and they had to go over 400 feet to hit water. Okay. And all the wells along that road. On what is that? Uh, in, what's the name of the pond in Smithfield? North, North Pond. North Pond, the same way, three to four hundred feet, and your the camp is on the lake. You don't really know until you drill. Right, right. And someone could buy land and never plan to have a well on the property. Oh. Well, so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, that's what's happening with uh, Lot Seven, right? Right. They're just buying the land. But it's already been sold. Lot one. Oh, lot one. Okay. Lot one. Right. One yeah, lot was sold to the buyer. Oh, it's lot one. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So that. If there are no historic or archaeological sites, wildlife habitat, scenic areas or rare natural areas, then there's no protection plan that's required, which then wipes out the rest of that page. Okay. Which means we're to the point of you folks looking at the application and asking any questions that you might have about the information that's been submitted. or layout on the plan, if there's something that we need to see differently. Uh, we, sh we should have a discussion about the covenants that are in the application, whether those are appropriate. Uh, I don't know if you might want to guide through the covenants formally. Sure. In terms of what you're proposing. Yeah, we can look at those. Who enforces the covenants before we decide? The covenants 
is being enforced by other property owners of the subdivision. If the town, I did think of this, if the town wants a note on the plan saying something like, uh, the town has the ability, but are not obligated to enforce covenants, I can put that on. So it's just, you, you have no obligation to do so, but if it's something you feel like, you know, is affecting the town, then, then I'd be okay with putting that on. Um, you, you see more municipalities than we do. do. Is that a customary statement to? It's it's not. We kind of just thought of that the other day um, because you know, people, I guess, may think that the town can enforce it and will enforce it. Yeah, we've had calls from other people who bought lots in subdivision, right? Wanting the town to step in and do something. Well, we don't do that. That's no. a civil matter. Exactly. But we will not issue a permit right. based on covenants. So we're not going to ever issue a permit. For a mobile home, it's no mobile home homes are allowed in there. Right. So the covenants in the book. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at that. Oh, yes, they are. Um, exhibit two. Exhibit two. We'll start at the top. Mobile or manufactured homes shall not be permitted on any lots. Each lot shall be used for single family residential or recreational purposes. Commercial uses and activity are prohibited. However, business activity associated with an in home occupation, professional trade, farming, and the rental of dwellings shall, the dwelling singular, shall be permitted. Number three, all structures erected on any lot shall be promptly and expeditiously completed to their exterior within 18 months after construction is commenced. Number four, no unregistered, motor, no unregistered vehicles, metal storage containers, and no junk, trash, debris shall be allowed to remain on the premises. There shall be no clearing of woody vegetation within 100 feet of the center line of Red Barn Road other than for the installation of driveway, utility lines, or septic systems. This area is, is to remain naturally vegetated and serve as a privacy buffer from the road. And number six, camper trailers, RVs. Camper trailers and RVs shall only be permit, permitted on the premises May through November. This covenant shall not apply to camper trailer and RVs when stored on the premises in conjunction with a single family residence. How do we manage these covenants? Who's going to go out there and tell these people that they can't have these? So the town, as of now, if the plan was approved as of right, you know, today or next month without any changes, the town wouldn't be able or liable to enforce those. Um, for me, since I will be selling the property, this will be disclosed. And so it, you know, it attracts people who have the same values. Um, today, I actually got a call from someone who saw the notice of this meeting and mentioned that they like the covenants. They're you know older, they're retired, they're looking to downsize and want to buy you know a piece of land to build somewhere where they you know have a sense of security that the neighborhood isn't going to go you know in the, in the direction that that they're not wanting. So it kind of just provides a little security <coughs> for buyers and future landowners. Is it just fluff? Is what? Is it just fluff? I mean, it, you know, it's it it. I mean, it because it's just words on a paper that can't you know because. I'm gonna. I, I could be the retiree that wants to downsize and build my single family home there, and and. The, the next door neighbor is going to put a trailer on it, but who's going to tell that next door neighbor that they can't, they got to move their trailer off of there. Who's going to, who's going to do that? I think the, 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 per, the, the permitting process would prevent that one right there. The, the, yeah. so the, the town's permitting process 
if I gather this right, would per, would prevent the the manufactured home or, or the trailer there. Okay. So it'll, it'll be, it'll be shut down. The other the other stuff is civil. It's yeah, civil, right. it's all civil. It's, it's all not yeah. it's outside the jurisdiction of the county. Okay, all right. It's between so, the property owners. Property on a fight, basically. It's when it comes out of the post court. Yeah. So all these houses have to be still built. You can't, you can't put a modular in there, then. You can put a modular in a you know, stick built home just in pieces. So modulars are within the covenants. Yeah. Okay. There's something that lays the foundation, puts a modular on top of it. Yeah, gotcha. <clears throat> so I guess for the only, uh, so number five for me, um, <clears throat> I think, again, so, so like everyone says, you know, these are only going to be enforced when, you know, a buyer or somebody takes them to court. So whether they're going to be enforced, no, who knows. But to say you can't take any woody vegetation within 100 feet, you know, what if a tree is leaning? What if? There's too many what ifs, and I just think that that's that's overreaching the way Everything else is that makes total sense. Uh, telling somebody that they can't cut a, a tree down within 100 feet of a set line of a road, it's, I just I I can't in a good conscience say that's a, that's a good thing. Um, why why is that covenant in there? Well. <clears throat> I guess the idea is just so someone can clear the road. Clear front? Right. Confront. I don't know. You know, the, the way that the land looks right now, you drive through, it's wooded, looks nice. This would at least discourage anyone from cutting that and changing the nature of, of the road. So we um, talked about this at what was it, July meeting? And, and how that conversation came up and changing the makeup of that road. Because at that time it was 10 subdivision, you know, places. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, I think, I think, you know, I think Mike, it, it, you know, it, it, if, if it's leaning and it's a safety hazard, I don't think anybody's going to say anything about cutting down something that has fallen um but they can add words if something has become disabled you know is falling and to take it take it out That's you what know i was going to say it's could you add a, yeah. an exception to that comment that you know if the tree is right. falling or yes, it is. is yeah. dead or you know whatever i'm okay with i mean you know, you guys are all residents here and, and you know, may hold a little bit more stake than I do. I'm, I'd be happy to strike that from the covenants if, if you feel that that's a little too much. Okay with that. My other thought too is, is one of the things that you're seeing a lot now in construction is like passive solar design, solar design. You know, that's a great point. So, yeah. If you're going to ask people leave all that real wood like that. I mean, you take out a lot of construction options for people who are trying to make these energy efficient homes where, where solar, yeah. you know, especially with that south facing, right? right. That, that, I mean, that <clears throat> this is south facing. And I don't know what it looks like across the road, whether it's five land or whatever a combination. Well, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah, so I haven't um, thought of that. So that's that, 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 that would, I guess that would be what that would be one thing to think of is that if a person like, I just know if it was me, being a resident of rural America, rural Americans tend to kind of take the approach of like, if I buy a chunk of land and I want to make a passive solar house and cut more of these trees, I don't want the person next door, you know, saying, you know, I, worrying about the length of my lawn or something like that. You know, sure. like that, that, tends, that tends to be something that is kind of frowned on this pilot kind of I, I just, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm speaking off. Of Some people yeah. like yeah. rolling lawns. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I think something like that, that can be pretty restrictive for people who, you know, in, in the rural part of the world kind of don't mind, you know, if I got to cut some trees, I got to cut some trees, you know, but I wouldn't open up and make it look the way that I want, you know. So I think, and I don't know, it may also be restrictive for you to sell them, you know, yeah. in, in the first place. So, um, but that's just me. So, well, thank you. 
Okay. Isn't there power line right through there? There are up to uh, Todd Stewart's lot or yep. um, with power lines, you're pretty real, pretty restricted on how close the power lines you're gonna come. With your what I mean, what are the 25 feet or something, <clears throat> something like that? Which is a from my opinion, a fair buffer for a road. So you heard comments and staff from tonight. Oh, God, I think everybody's, the road. Yeah. everybody's fine with whatever direction you choose. If you just want to follow up with that specifically at the next meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any but other we're items? not taking any formal action on this right now. No, I think he's heard the concerns of the board. I don't think it's going to be a break on either side. Right. But I think there's something either create an exception or hazard or just remove it altogether. Right. Yeah, of course. While we're waiting on comment from the board, does the public have anything specifically that they'd like to address or comments that they'd like to make? No. I don't care about the trees. Back the house is up 100 feet. <laughs> that well, turns the house back over the road. <clears throat> so that is kind of the. Um, Reasoning for that covenant okay. is be because yeah, it can remain within a hundred feet. Even That's right. These. Yeah. Um, so this is in order to have this setback. That's, That's longer. Exactly. That's right. So do you include that? That was that the house <laughs> that on the road. I mean, this cut all the trees you want. <laughs> Oh, on your side of the road. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is the uh, town setback? Uh, uh, there is a one. I don't <laughs> really have one. No, we don't have a setback, but we would maintain probably three rod. Yeah. You would maintain what, Richard? We would maintain three rod from you know the width of the road. Right. It's not going to get you back 100 feet, that's for sure. No. Right. no. So could you, if we did a compromise with this, you know, because you just reminded me about that conversation earlier this summer, could part of the building permit, could we come up with, I guess we, I guess we can't because if we don't have it in any other place, we can't put a regulation on how far these houses are. Right. It would have to be part of an ordinance. Yeah. So I I think I I I think that was the that was a compromise in that last discussion is that is keep the trees, so it doesn't change you know to keep the houses further back. Well, that's up to you. I think um, if if you want to put you know an exception in there <clears throat> for dead or dying or damaged trees um but you're trying to sell these so i don't know how anybody would react to that mm -hmm. if they were looking at it to buy but that's not here nor there well, i'm just curious in terms of kind of reason for the setback i'm just curious yeah over you know 100 feet you said 100 feet back from the road right from the center line of the road from the center line your own road, right? So it'd be 75 feet on average. I thought it was 33 feet. A three rod road is 50 feet. 49 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Around the what is this? <laughs> So um, do we want to leave that up to Brian to decide how he wants to handle that? And then we will go into it at well, the next meeting when yeah, we do the I think it's a good idea because it's the purpose of the covenant in the first place was to make sure that you had houses set for the better for the, town, the town's not going to come up with improvements and we're going to say that yeah, we're going to enforce this, but we don't enforce it anywhere else. Right. Um, yeah. Well, we're not going to enforce any of it. 
<laughs> well, no, no. Except, well, no. Unless you want to build a covenant. <laughs> yeah. But if, if, if there's a covenant in the deed and they give us the plot plan of the lot, the layout of the house, they're going to have to have it back if that's what it calls for. You know, if, if, if it says you can't clear within 100 feet of the road, mm -hmm. line, then well, how are you going to put your house here? That's right. the question in the code's office. Right. If, you know, I, if someone's, you know, breaking a rule like we were saying, cutting a tree, and then I'm going to have to take you to court for my neighbor, and I'm going to try to take you to court over a tree. That, you're right, that's kind of ridiculous. Right. But if you're building a house and you know that it's within that 100 feet, and you build a house, and I can take you to court and say, you got to tear down your house. Right. So people will respect some of these for sure, like that. Right. So, you know, I guess I, I hear that having a setback from the road for building is maybe so. Because here's a good question. Can he include that in the covenants for these lots and these lots alone and sell them but there has to be a setback? He can just say that. Instead of the trees. Instead of the trees. He can put whatever structure on the lots they like. Yeah. To. Yeah. yeah, I I would agree with this but I sat back covenant long before I did heal the trees. So that's yeah. So do we want to leave it up to him and then cope with it in the final? No, no. I mean yeah. yes you do, but <laughs> for the sake of expediency and yeah, process, I think. If he's got one way or another that he can say tonight that he would be agreeable to, that you know that needs to be made public because we don't want to come to the next meeting thinking we're a final plan and yeah, have that be the deal breaker. Right. Okay. So either we would leave the hundred in place with the trees, or there's going to be a setback with the houses, or maybe there's none. I don't want a setback. That's why you don't put it. Don't. I'm going to put that in this code. Um, I don't want to profit that. So I hate to put you on the spot, but I also don't want that to be a deal breaker. Sure. No, no, no. So if you were a buyer, and either we have a company on the plan saying that you know we can accept hazard and dead trees, the other way I probably wouldn't show the building setback as a covenant, but I would show a buffer from the road. And so you're going to see this line across here that pretty much says you can't. It's a building setback. It's going to be line and it's going to be late. So would you put it through Kyoto's camp? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but all of you need to kind of reference the plan that's filed. Right. I think that's fine. Yeah. 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 All right. So he's going to does that satisfy? Yeah. So I'm just going to be I'll just have them show a 75 foot from the edge of the right of way. Or residential dwellings. I wouldn't vote on it right now. I just wanted to get it on the table so we didn't have to rehash it. The next time, then he's going to go back and get it. <laughs> I'm going to strike the covenant number five. Okay. Okay. So covenant number five is going to disappear. We're going to have a buffer line on the revised layout plan. That's fine. Mr. Armstrong. Yeah. How are we doing? Are we just no, listening? No, it's interesting. Do you have any concerns? No, yeah, no. <laughs> it's a, it's a, just a personal opinion. If my wife's going to buy one, she would want as much sunshine on that piece of property as she could possibly get. So every, every tree will come down. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point. It'd be 75 feet back. Went in and cut trees on a person's property because they were allergic to maple trees. And so every maple tree on their property had to leave. I mean, why did they buy the property? Um, they bought the house and they bought the house and then found out because they were allergic to maple trees. You know, I, I just did a welding project for somebody that's moving up from New Jersey. I mean, trees are different. Yeah, so the conversation is interesting, <laughs> but irrelevant. <right? laughs>
Uh, are there any more questions, concerns, need for clarification from the board with regards to the Red Barnberg subdivision? This is really a last chance, well, not really a last chance opportunity, but in good faith with all the materials that he's put in front of us, uh, to provide that feedback to him because really the next step where we're going is going to be the final plan review where this gentleman is going to come in here with mylars and things like that that will then ultimately ask your signature uh, to be filed with registry of weeks for storing this up. So it's not a end, but it's, you know, as a courtesy, ideally we're getting all of our reservations out on the table right now. Richard, R Richard, um, the checklist that we just filled out, You'll include that in the package for the next meeting? Well, I'm actually going to spend a significant amount of time going through a finding of fact, like okay. we had done with the waste management application, but yep. with the subdivision. And so I'm going to send that out in a draft form electronically, and then I'll send a hard copy. And yeah. then those are the items that we'll review at the next meeting, line by line, and vote on. Okay, great. And yeah. um, and and so just to just so I can understand. This application uh, is this package here, and they don't have to, the applicant doesn't have to fill out an actual, like the building application or anything like that, right? Uh, the, the ordinance says that the planning board is responsible for providing an application right. under the subdivision ordinance, right. uh, which is why we didn't have one, and we then yep. we had pending application. So I just went to the ordinance and pulled everything out for a checklist. And yep. then the applicant and then just you know put this together much like yep. you see with a larger site plan review yeah um to just provide all that information in there in the order that is requested in the ordinance so would we have the applicant after you complete the um the checklist and do some kind of acknowledgement of of signing something yeah, so the plan that you have, the draft plan that was all folded up in your packet. Yeah. He's going to revise that with what we've discussed tonight. He's going to make yep. the adjustments with the abutters and whatnot, the owner ownership. Uh, and then he's going to come in and we're actually going to sign papers of that. Okay. And then it's going to get filed at the registry of deeds. And every deed that then comes from the subdivision will reference Somerset County Registry of Deeds, book number, plan number, and then you'll mm -hmm. be able to pull this out. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> just a quick question. Um, and maybe this is just for my clarity as I'm learning too. But so as far as the well drilling letter, so I'm not sure you know how many wells temple well drilling is done around in the area. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know what it would I guess I'm just talking yeah. I don't know how is it, but it makes sense is this there's several around there's burns and there's um weeks, oh, weeks and all yeah. so I've done I just, and again, not that someone that's familiar with the area would sure. think that. Would, yeah, no, I you know, and I know maybe they have, maybe these guys more have been up here a hundred times and it's just not. Yeah, out. so I, I don't know if that's more of a, I mean, who knows how old this language is in yeah. subdivision ordinances, yeah. but now all wells should be reported to the state, yeah. which then map them. Yeah, and yeah, so it's a great I've been on there. That's exactly where this well is. Well really went, looked at all them, gave his professional opinion on the recharge rate and adequacy. So, you know, that's so you get the data from there. Okay, that's yeah. Yeah. Like any other, like any other well driller around yeah. here would do the same right. thing. Other than with the rather than experience, I guess I didn't know how to stay safe for walls. No, get on there. <laughs> so, I guess just to compound that in the discussion that we've had around that, maybe as a part of his letter, uh, a history, a brief bio, like a well driller, estimated number of wells drilled, been doing this for X number of years. Some sort of a qualification statement. Yeah, sure. Just you know, we don't do subdivisions too often, but yeah. Or Be nice to have up. This research that he had to, that he did anyway in the state records. I mean, that would explain a lot too. Yeah. Okay. Great. 
And I, I agree with you, Richard. The more information that's in that letter, the better. Just because out of peace of mind with all the news around our wells in these areas. So. If there's nothing else with regards to this, uh, we would require again at least 14 days advance notice. Yes. Uh, the next regular meeting of the planning board, my mouse is on the wrong screen, uh, is late October. in October. Yeah. It is. Well, it's as late as it can get, right? <laughs> so it's going to be not until the 14th of October. Yeah. So that's going to give you until the 30th of <clears throat> September, two weeks, to get that updated information, revision to your plan. We're able to do that, and great, we can have it at a regular meeting. Don't we have another applicant on the 14th? Uh, well, yeah, we're going to hit that in a minute. Okay. But, uh, I honestly, I don't have a formal application. Oh, I have all right. Fees that are paid, and I have nothing else. And. We're, we're lacking a lot of information with regards to that application too. So um, as an administrator, I, I appreciate folks that have things buttoned up yeah. and in order for us. So can we say, can we give a priority to this applicant for the 14th and then post push the next applicant to the November meeting? I, I wouldn't want to do both at the same time if we, if we, can avoid it. I don't see why not. Or we could have a special meeting like we did for this one. That's the pleasure of the board. Okay. I would rather do the November meeting, but it, you know, I don't want to. You know, it's been a long day. So we would <laughs> final plan this at the next regular meeting, mm -hmm. and then the next applicant would be on the November meeting. That's my recommendation. That's fine. Yeah, let's appreciate that. Yeah, I just think I just out of all, you know, we, we all work really hard and and we want to. I want to be hyper focused about these meetings, and I think it's it's a healthy conversation and it's a good work session, and I think, you know, after so many, it's yada yada yada. Listen for my name. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So I think we're good. You have the proposed revisions. Yeah. You're gonna get those to us 14 days before a regular meeting, which would be September 30th or November, right? September 30th. Thank you. Uh, and then we'll get that back out to the board. We'll send the appropriate notices to all the abutters once again of that meeting that we've received the update and it's on file at the office. And we can go from that. Thank you very much for putting it together and getting us all the revisions. And thank you it's for your time. Uh, my first subdivision, so I appreciate it. Johnny, your purse is over here. Yeah. <laughs> we still got minutes to do. Okay. Um, it looks like, is there any, this is a three hundred oh, business per line. So Can we do the minutes before we do that? No, nope. your property, so they didn't extend the line, they just didn't show it. The same yeah. So your property. Line. Hey, Charlotte. Yeah. Charlotte. Charlotte. I motion to approve so the uh, yeah. then the August. So, so you do, you? Yeah. Second. No, third. So the board here. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Margaret. Aye. 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 Do old business. And old business was we put out a questionnaire. Yep. How is that? So, yes. Yeah, so the 
uh, survey itself online had some pretty good traction in the first couple of weeks. Uh, we've also had tax payments, so those have generated a lot more responses in house than we normally would have got. Um, and I was just going to pull it up right now. The vote of the board was to keep it open for 90 days mm -hmm. uh, or to get to that threshold. We, I believe, we have hit the threshold. Really? Awesome. Wow. Uh, really for good. response rates, I mean, that's a second. We've received 147 responses so far. Wow. And I haven't even got over there to do it. <laughs> and of that, only six people are not residents of Norwich Walk. So you're getting a pretty good yeah. example. Uh, as we stand today, 85.7% like the signboard as it is downtown. 57% uh, oppose an ordinance to regulate the signs in terms of timing, location, colors, et cetera. 42.9% are in favor of an ordinance. So you've got a 15 point spread there. And then we have a lot of comments. Um, uh, some people think that it's a, against the historical small town, that you don't need them. Uh, the West Front Street sign actually came up on several occasions. Um, people liked it, that they, it was informative for them. Uh, worry about the real problems. We did get a lot of those, like, why is this a priority? And so maybe the next time we do this, it's something that I've got to think about to lead the survey off with. Why are we doing the survey? Um, yeah. I was just looking to manage participation. Uh, but I bet we got a half a dozen of those um, as well. So, you know, I'll roll all that up, but after the 90 days, so that'll be November, December, if we have meetings, where we can look at those results. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Will you post yeah. those results online, Richard? Uh, yeah, I don't think it works really easy to be able to do it. So once I get to that 90 day threshold, I'll just make up a JPEG or something and put it out there and thank people. Oh, that, yep. that's, that's great. Thank you. That's informative. Well, it's nice before you spend the energies on developing an ordinance. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Would you say 40 smart percent are against it? Uh, are opposed to an ordinance, uh, are in favor of developing an ordinance. Right. 57% yeah, were against the ordinance, 85% like the side. Yeah, I already clicked off, sorry. Yeah. It's good. It's good participation in 30 days. That's, yeah. That, that that's is. what you want. <laughs> yeah. But thank you, thank you to the internet and the uh, taxpayers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is there any other old business? Nothing. Okay. Um, other business. In that um, webinar last night, it talked about getting uh, Freedom of Information certified for planning board members. This is a new law in the state of Maine, which is a, a, like an online thing. Richard, you probably have more. Yes, uh, I'm aware of that. And you give me just one second. I know Margaret, so I sent you a packet. Like that. I'm pretty sure the board's in compliance with freedom of access. Um, but I think we're, as board members, we're supposed to get like certified training in it or certification. Yeah, so it's a, a, an actual training. So maybe your training as they would have qualified for that. But we also issue the uh, frequently asked question booklet that you sign off, that you've received, that you've read, that you had the opportunity to understand. Um, John, I don't have you sign that you're going to need an option for. So maybe that's the gap. I can get you another one. But that was issued at first meeting at the time meeting. And I've got. Do you have mine? I don't. Okay. Must have been something you took home. Do you need another one? Yes. Okay. I have Mike's and I have Charlotte's. Okay. Margaret, did I, I don't, mail you don't have mine. No, I have it in my freaking bag. So I, but I mailed I, it to you, right? Yeah, for sure. I just got okay. it but last week. So I'm sorry okay. about that. I haven't done oh. it. Yeah. Right, so John, okay. Are you going to Thursdays? That's the plan. 
Yeah. Richard, can I, can I PDF it to you or do you need my original signature? No, you can PDF. All part. right, then I'll do that. I'll do that. I wasn't sure if you needed my original. Thank you. I wanted to see, and then at the very last minute, they said they would do it on Zoom. Was there, was the town meeting last night? It was um, an MMA meeting. It was a planning board, a board of appeals training, and it was supposed to be in South Portland, so John had signed up for it. Okay. And then they ended up canceling that and just going to Zoom only at the last minute. Right. So it was something that you could have theoretically signed on to, but we didn't have the advance on it. Right. Yeah. Right. The one Thursday, what's that covering? That's going to be everything. It's, it's a total municipal legal update. So you know, the past election and liens and registrations and it might dabble in land use a little bit. Um, what's the one coming up in September? There's like several that are coming up, but it's all the same, same one. There's I'm not sure. I'll look at the trainings and I'll forward those out again. I know MMA is going back to all in uh, online uh -huh. for the short term, and that makes it easier to attend yeah. sometimes. Yeah, is it a Zoom style training or one you can kind of work your way through on your own? Like I think it's like Zoom okay. webinar. Yeah. But the one last night was three hours. That Zoom yeah. Meeting. Most classes are. Um, so yeah, was, and, they're, and they're talking and talking and talking, and then you can only submit questions in on the question board. And um, they address those questions now and then, but you, we're all muted, and you're seeing the the present pres the person presenting, and that's it for three hours. So I should have my correction next to me from school. Oh. You're, you're multitasking as you're listening to this presentation, and the most helpful was the question boards. I copied and pasted the questions out and they dropped in. So that was the most helpful thing to me. I went in and I copied and pasted all of the questions and their responses. That's pretty smart. I wouldn't know how to do that. <laughs> I did it last year and and I, I was stabbing me in the eye, the whole thing. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, calling me, meeting adjourned. Okay. See you October 14th. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Okay.